Okay, here we are, Chongyang High School. As you can see, the students are gone, they're on vacation. Straight ahead you have my desk, and this is the office, which I've had pretty much to myself for the past two and a half years, which has been great. Uh, here we have the English classroom where I teach, and nice big screen TV. You can see that Christmas decorations still haven't been taken down. Might want to do that sometime soon, Bill. But uh, anyway, this is my last work week here. I've been doing what they call desk warming for the last two weeks. Had a few classes here and there, but nothing today. And uh, I figured I'd make this video. A lot of time on my hands. This is the soccer field and the apartments. Mine's somewhere off in the distance to kind of tempt me to make a break for it. <laughs> no, but uh, this video is kind of, that I'm going to make is kind of a future gift to myself, really. But it is relevant to veganism and. Uh, Hopefully fellow vegans and, oh, nice Kung Fu Panda there. <laughs> Inspiration, really, I think. He's a vegetarian. And um, apple. Every, every teacher's got to have an apple. But hopefully non-vegans and, and other people who watch this will be uh, get something out of it. So thanks. Let's do it. Okay, so I mentioned in a previous video that I don't feel welcome at this school anymore because the teachers caught on to the vegan activism I've been doing on Facebook. And... I want to explain more on that, but I need to start with a quick disclaimer. I'm going to use the word they a lot in this video in reference to Korean people, and I obviously don't mean to say that all Koreans will think or act a certain way. This is just what I've gathered in my very short time here. And if you're sensitive to that word, then you've been given fair warning. So the first thing you should know about Korea is that the teachers move around a lot. They don't usually stay at a particular school for more than five years. Um, it's a relatively small country, so they don't have to go very far. They just go to a different school in the same province, usually. And every semester, we lose some teachers and we gain some new ones. And last semester, we got a new English teacher. She's a Korean woman, but she's fluent in English, and she's just about the same age that I am. So early on, she asked me if we could be friends on Facebook. And I told her honestly that I don't use Facebook for socializing. I use it to promote veganism. And she said that was fine because she went vegetarian for a while. And uh, I said, all right. But what I didn't realize, and it seems obvious to me now, was that when she said she went vegetarian, she meant that she went on a diet for reasons of either health or beauty. And some of you might already know, but the beauty standards in Korea are insane. And I think most people here, men and women alike, suffer from some kind of body image um, insecurity. And I think a few celebrities have gone vegetarian for health, so they mostly only know in that context. So when she saw my Facebook page, it must have been shocking. In fact, I know it was, because there was an immediate transformation in her attitude and behavior towards me. But I didn't take that too personally. I just figured it was a drawback to being a vegan activist. And the other thing you might not know about Korea is that they're very well connected, and they share information very freely and very quickly. So if a teacher finds out that I'm a vegan tyrant on Facebook, then they all know it. And they, they didn't tell me directly, but I knew the moment they all found out because I walk through the office every morning and for the past few years I've just bowed and smiled at all the administrators and teachers and they've always seemed happy to see me. But the last semester it's felt like my presence has become this dark cloud of shame and, and disappointment, which I'm actually kind of glad it happened because it allowed me to realize a few things about Korean culture that I hadn't thought of before, and I feel like sharing them in this video, but again, this is just my personal take, and it in no way accounts for all Koreans. So like I said before, Korean people are very well connected, and they're united in a way that I've never seen before, and I don't think I'll ever understand it, but just to give you a few quick examples, if I ask one of my students where they're going after school, they would say what would translate as, I'm going to our house. And if they introduced their family, they would say, this is our mother. But she and my mother, <laughs> and I don't live with them. It's just the way it's expressed, and they do have words for I, me, or mine. But if the subject's included, they usually go with ours, or our, which I always thought was great. And to give you another example, when I first moved here, and they found out that I was American, they, a lot of people would say, Yu Hyun Jin, Yu Hyun Jin, LA Dodgers. And I'm not a big sportsman, so I didn't know what that meant, but apparently 
Yu Hyun Jin is a pitcher from South Korea who got into the MLB. And I originally thought that that was just their way of connecting with me. But the more I thought about it from their perspective, I think it must have felt like they had all gotten into the MLB in, in a strange kind of way. And to me, that's really beautiful because if you're, if another person's success is seen as your own, and everything you do is not just for your own benefit, but on behalf of your family and your country, then I think you can accomplish a lot more. And you can definitely bear a lot more injury. And if you know anything about Korean culture, you'd know they have been through quite a lot. And in fact, the reason they still continue to eat dog meat is not because they're savages, like people often assume. It's because during Japanese occupation from 1904 to 1944, they were starved out, so they had to eat dog meat. And that's also the reason why they eat, say, eat a lot, eat a lot. So their relationship with food is a little bit different. But another thing that I've realized about that sense of unity and connectedness that I mentioned is that it does come with some disadvantages, which is that the social risks become a lot higher, and it makes it much harder for people to step outside the cultural norms, like, for example, going vegan, or even getting a tattoo, which is still something that's kind of frowned upon here. Um, it can ruin you, and once you get cast out of your social circle or the in-group, which is, I guess, what happened to me, <laughs> it can be devastating. But Luckily, I'm not too invested in their opinion of me, but I can only imagine how painful it would be for someone whose entire identity is set in that social network. And I might be wrong in saying this, but I think that's the reason why Korea has the second highest suicide rate in the world. And unfortunately, in the short two and a half years that I've been here, two of the students have jumped to their death off of buildings. So that wasn't easy. but. I guess it's just more that I can add to the long list of things which are completely, or at least for the most part, out of my control. Now, to paint an even better picture of how inclusive this culture is, uh, I think it's really obvious when it comes to their food rituals. I was lucky enough to eat lunch at the school cafeteria with the other teachers, and the cafeteria staff has always been really supportive of my vegan lifestyle. They gave me lots of food and lots of extra side dishes, but when I first got here, the teachers would comment on my food and, and watch me eat and even take from my plate and I don't know about you but I don't like people touching my food or watching me eat and in my western mind I thought that they were taking from me what they wanted because they were older and they could or something but I was really embarrassed when I eventually learned that sharing food is an important part of their culture and they even pour drinks for each other so when they took from my plate, what they were actually trying to say to me was that even though I'm eating something different, they accept me into their little food circle. And when they were watching me eat, what they were trying to do is pace their meal with mine. Because in Korea, after a meal, everyone gets up from the table and leaves together. So it took some getting used to, but that is something that I really like now. And I hope I can take it with me when I go. So I guess to sum up this video, uh, my departure from Chungyang High School is well-timed because I'm not welcome here anymore, but the good news is that the vegan message has been seen by the entire staff, and I can't say if the abolitionist approach will ever be accepted here, but I'm pretty certain that if and when Korea does decide to go vegan, they will all be going vegan together. So thanks for watching, please go vegan and spread the message.